In this video we're going to start chapter 3 and we're going to talk about exponential functions. The idea with exponential functions is that the variable is in the exponent. So, for example, we can look at something like 2 to the x or 3 to the x or, you know, even square root of 47 to the x. Just anything to the x power. Whereas before, we were dealing with functions in which the exponent was constant. x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the one half. Here the variable is in the position we call the base. Whereas with exponential functions, the variable is in the exponent position. It's in the superscript. And in general, they look like the following. If y equals a to the x, where we're assuming in this case that a is larger than 1. Passes through a number of points. Passes through the point uh, 0, 1, because anything to the 0th power is 1, so whenever you replace 0 for x, a to the 0 is going to give you 1. At x equals 1, you're at the point a. At 2, you're at a squared, 3, a cubed, and so forth and so on. The domain of this function is all real numbers or written in interval notation as minus infinity to infinity. The range ends up being all positive real numbers or from zero to infinity parentheses around zero. So you're not going to have any x-intercepts on this graph or on these types of graphs. So you have no x-intercepts. The y-intercept will be the point uh, 0, 1 as we saw. This will have no symmetry that we've seen <clears throat> it'll be one-to-one -one and it'll be uh, end up being invertible as we'll see in the next section with uh, logarithmic functions. Now this is how graphs like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, square root 47 to the x look because all these numbers 2, 3, square root of 47 are greater than 1. But if you have a fraction like say one half to the x or one third to the x, if a is between zero and one, then the graph just flips across the y axis. Oops, it's not exactly what I wanted there. Something like that. There we go. Yeah. So for this graph, when A is a fraction, everything just flips around. Flips around the y-axis. Now, one of the most important applications of exponential functions is compound interest. The way most interest is calculated is done through some sort of compound interest. So in this case, this is the formula for 
um, interest compounded n times per year. We say A is the uh, future value of the account. P is the present value, how much you have in the account now. R is the interest rate as a decimal. N is the number of times the account is compounded per year. And T is the time in years. And I should note that this is the annual interest rate. So, for example, if I take a look at something like, say, 48 of this section, they tell us to find the future value and the interest earned given the parameters of an account. So if you initially have 4,000, excuse me, uh, $6,240 invested in an account, and that account earns 7.5% annual interest and is compounded monthly, and we leave it for 12 years, how much are you going to have left in 12 years' time? Well, they've already told us the present amount, that P is equal to 6,240 telling us the interest of 7.5% tells us that R is 0 0.075. Compounded monthly, this means that the number of times we're going to compound each year is the same as the number of months. We're going to compound once per month. So N is going to be 12. And the time, how long excuse me, how long we're leaving the money in the account is 12 years. So if we plug all these numbers in, the only thing we don't know is the final amount, which is what we're asked to find. Find A, or the future value of the account. Well, all we're going to do is we're just going to plug all these numbers in and plug them into our calculator to figure out the answer. So we have P being 6,240 and then 1 plus the interest rate as a decimal, so 0 0.075. We're going to divide that by 12 since we're compounding once every month and then to the 12 times 12 years. So there's going to be 144 compoundings because that's how many months there are in 12 months. So if we look at this using my calculator off screen here, let's see. So we have 6,240 times 1 plus 0 0.075 divided by 12, and then I'm going to raise that to the 12 times 12 power. So, according to my calculator, 
that tells us that in 12 years the account will have fifteen thousand three hundred four dollars and uh, if we round down as uh, a bank would <coughs> and ninety nine cents so this is going to be the final amount so this is our answer in part A part B how much interest did this earn well what's the difference you know how much should we gain from starting at 6240 to getting to this final amount well the interest that we earned is just going to be a minus p the future value minus the present value so leaving this for 12 years we will have gained nine thousand sixty four dollars and ninety nine cents so we will have more than doubled our original amount if we leave it there for twelve years the thing is though is that as you increase the number of compoundings if you did it not just monthly but then daily but you could then up it to you know make it compounding every hour then another bank could offer you compounding every minute and yet a third bank could offer compounding every second and you can get faster and faster and faster and it turns out that there's a limit to this whole process and it's called continuously compounded interest and this formula is as follows it's even simpler it's the future value is the present value times e to the r t power so everything's the same their future value present value interest rate and time but this e it isn't a variable it's like pi it's just some number and this number, like pi, occurs very naturally in mathematics, and so we gave it a name. Oops, this is 8, 218. So, you know, you can compute E to as far as you like, 2.71828. 1828459 you know so forth and so on it's like e it's like a pi rather it's an irrational number so it goes on forever and displays no particular pattern but it does pop up in a number of kind of odd places like here in the continuously compounded interest so if we redid this problem and said well you know what would the difference be if instead of compounding monthly we compounded continuously so if we did 48 again but compounded continuously rather than monthly how much more would we get and we'll get a little bit more but as it's kind of a limiting factor it's not going to grow um, without bounds it is going to be bounded by this formula. So we'll get a little bit more, but you know, going to daily, hourly, you know, by minute, by second, it's going to start to approach the particular value we're going to calculate right now. So we have the future value is going to be 6,240 times E, this weird number, to the 0 0.075, so r is still as a decimal, times 12, times 12 years. And so if I plug this into the calculator, 
times and typically calculators will have an exponential feature to them and we get that our final balance in 12 years is going to be 15,347 dollars and 92 cents rounding down again <clears throat> so the difference in this case between what we had before isn't a great deal yeah. it's about forty two dollars and ninety three cents more than if we compounded monthly and if you repeated this but with you know shorter and shorter compoundings if you compounded every day every minute every hour or every hour then minute then second and you kept going you'd shrink this difference down between you know compounding a finite number of times per year and you get closer and closer to this number which represents compounding continuously at every single moment in the year 